I've long believed that the desktop version of Obsidian is the best version of Obsidian. And one of the reasons for this is that you have a physical keyboard you can use when working with your notes in your Obsidian Vault. Not only does a keyboard make text input easier, but it also boosts your productivity by giving you the ability to control Obsidian by triggering commands straight from your keyboard. In this video, I'm gonna help you get faster in Obsidian through using hotkeys to trigger commands without having to reach for your mouse. I'll show you some of my favorite built-in keyboard shortcuts to help you do common things in Obsidian even faster. I'll walk you through how to set up custom hotkeys of your own. I'll share a bunch of my favorite custom hotkeys for commands that I use all the time. And I'll teach you how to make those custom keyboard shortcuts easier to trigger and remember by creating a hyperkey. Now I'm using a Mac, so I'll be describing the shortcuts using a Mac OS keyboard layout. If you're using a PC instead, most of the time you can just replace Command with Control and Option with Alt. And if you need to look at a keyboard shortcut, you can do so by going to Settings, Hotkeys, and searching for the command that you want in the list. Pro tip here, you can also click the keyboard icon and type the hotkey combination if you wanna search the commands that way instead. All right, let's get into the essential keyboard shortcuts. Now all of these are enabled by default when you first open Obsidian, at least as of version 1.6. I downloaded a demo vault and started from scratch just to make sure. Now the first keyboard shortcut you absolutely need to know is the hotkey to open the command palette, which is Command P. This allows you to run any of the available commands in Obsidian by typing the name of the command, selecting it from the list, and hitting the Enter key. This is easily my most used keyboard shortcut. I use it dozens of times a day while in Obsidian. The command palette is one of the most underrated features of Obsidian in my opinion, and I even did a whole video about some of the non-obvious ways that you can use it, like discovering new commands when you install plugins and remembering keyboard hotkeys. The second keyboard shortcut you need to know is the hotkey to open the quick switcher, which is Command O. This opens the quick switcher, which is not only the quickest way to find and open a note, but also the quickest way to create a new note. Just open the quick switcher with the hotkey, type the name of a note to find and open it, or type the title of a new note and then hit the enter key to create it. There are even additional keyboard shortcuts visible on the bottom that allow you to open it in a new tab or open it to the right of the tab that you're currently working in. The next essential keyboard shortcut is Command E, which toggles between reading and editing mode. This isn't as critical as it used to be since Live Preview now renders the text of the lines that you aren't actively editing but there are still cases when you need to be in reading mode for notes to display properly. For example, I always use reading mode when viewing my daily note. This makes sure that the tasks that I check off get logged correctly. But if I need to edit the text itself of any note in reading mode, I can just use this keyboard shortcut to quickly switch over and then make my edits. The next keyboard shortcut is the command click shortcut, which instead of just opening the link, allows you to open the link in a new tab. This allows you to lay out your notes side by side in a workspace by first opening them in a new tab, and then you can drag that tab where you want it in your Obsidian interface. This also works when selecting notes from the list in the file explorer and from the local graph, which I keep pinned in the lower half of my right sidebar. The next keyboard shortcut is the hotkey to search in all files, Command Shift F. Note that this is different than Command F, which is the hotkey to search the contents of the note in the current tab. With the search in all files command, you can instantly open the search tab in the left sidebar and start typing to search the contents of your entire Obsidian vault. You can use modifiers here like file colon, path colon, or tag colon to refine your search. And there are toggles for collapsing the results, showing more context, and explaining the search terms to help you craft better searches in the future. But if you're trying to find something somewhere in your Obsidian vault, this hotkey makes it much easier to do so. The next keyboard shortcut is for navigating forward or back in the current tab by using Command Option and the left arrow or right arrow keys. This is the equivalent of clicking the forward and back arrows in the note title bar. So if you've navigated a chain of several notes, you can use this hotkey to go forward or back in the current tab until you find the one that you're looking for. The next keyboard shortcut is Command K, which is the hotkey for inserting a markdown link into the text of your active note. This adds the markdown formatting for the link and places the cursor in between the square brackets so you can type the text that you want to turn into a link, then move the cursor and insert the URL. I usually add links when editing, so alternatively, you can highlight the text that you want to turn into a link 
and hit Command K, which places the highlighted text in between the square brackets, so you can just paste the URL that you want to link to. The next keyboard shortcut is another two-part shortcut for navigating between open tabs. Just like most modern web browsers, you can use Control Tab to switch to the next open tab in the tab bar, and Shift Control Tab to go back to the previous one. Using the keyboard shortcuts, you can cycle left or right between the open tabs without having to take your fingers off your keyboard. The next keyboard shortcut is also related to tab management, and that is Command Shift T, which lets you reopen a closed tab. I tend to have a lot of tabs open at once, and I will occasionally close a tab that I wanted to keep open. Looking at the recent files doesn't always help me locate it, as it might have been opened quite a while ago. So this hotkey basically acts as an undo button for me when I make a mistake while trying to keep things tidy. The next keyboard shortcut is Command Semicolon, which jumps you back to the top of the note and creates a new blank note property. Now I don't use properties a ton, and most of my notes that have them are created from template files. But every once in a while, it's handy to apply a property like note level tags, for example, this way. There are also a bunch of built-in commands that I recommend you create hotkeys for. You can create a hotkey for a command by going to Settings, Hotkeys, and then selecting the command that you want from the list. Then click the plus button and type the hotkey that you want to use. If the hotkey doesn't exist, it will be recorded and it will be displayed like this. But if there's another command that uses that hotkey already, it will turn red to indicate that there's a conflict. You can click on the red hotkey to show which commands have duplicate hotkeys, then change them so that the conflict disappears. However, there are only so many keys on the keyboard and hotkeys can be a bit tricky to recall, which is why I use an app on my Mac called SuperKey that allows me to remap a couple of keys on my keyboard to make keyboard shortcuts easier to use and remember. SuperKey does a bunch of things, but two specific things are worth mentioning here as it pertains to crafting custom keyboard shortcuts. First, it allows you to remap the caps lock key to a hyper key so that when you hit caps lock, it simulates a key press of shift, control, option, and command all at the same time. By doing this, I can create a shortcut like caps lock M, which is the keyboard equivalent of hitting shift, control, option, command M. Now hitting all those keys can be difficult, which means that I can pretty much guarantee that any keyboard shortcut I make with the caps lock key will not conflict with anything else on my system. The second thing SuperKey gives us is a mech key, which simulates a key press of control option shift. This is another rarely used series of modifier keys, and you can map this to specific keys on your keyboard. I have my mech key mapped to my right shift key so I can use that to unlock another layer of custom keyboard shortcuts that won't conflict with anything else in my system. Now, all of my custom keyboard shortcuts in Obsidian use either the hyper key or the mech key as the basis for the hot key when possible. But if you don't think you need the mech key, then you can get just the hyper key functionality of super key by downloading a different, simpler app called hyper key. Hyper key is free, so maybe download that one first to see if it works for you, but I prefer SuperKey because it does a lot more, including remapping the paste without formatting command to the standard paste shortcut of Command-V when you use a particular modifier. And if you want to try out SuperKey, it has a 20-day free trial, then it's a one-time cost of $15.99 US dollars. All right, so here are the commands that I believe warrant a custom keyboard shortcut and the hotkeys that I use to trigger them. The first command is the copy obsidian URL command, which I have mapped to shift Control option command c or caps lock C. This is similar to the copy command, which is command C, but instead of copying the contents of the note, I'm copying the direct URL to the note itself. And this is useful if you want to link to a specific note in your Obsidian Vault from another app. For example, you may have a task to write an article and include the link to the note in the task description in your task manager. That way, your task manager can give you the notification when it's time to write the article and you can click the Obsidian URL in the notes to go straight to the note and do the actual work. The next couple of commands are related to daily notes, which I use heavily for my journaling workflows. I tie lots of data to my daily notes, and it can be helpful to navigate between them by using keyboard shortcuts. So Obsidian gives you three commands for navigating your daily notes. Open today's daily note, open previous daily note, and open next daily note. The previous daily note and the next daily note commands go forward or backward a day based on the daily note that you are currently viewing. 
So I have those set to caps lock left arrow and caps lock right arrow respectively. The command to open today's daily note, which is the one that I use the most, is caps lock up arrow, which remember is actually shift control option command up arrow since I've remapped that caps lock key using super key. The next command I use frequently is the export to PDF command. I use this often when I want to export a note and share it with someone, like when I share my notes from a course that I've taken or I want to share a draft of an article or script that I'm working on. You can export a note as a PDF by clicking on the ellipsis in the upper right of the note title bar, but I've set this to the hotkey control option shift P. Those modifiers are the ones used by the mech key from super key. So when I trigger this, I actually use the hotkey right shift P. The next command I use often is move file to another folder. I tend to use a folder structure in the file explorer as one of the ways to keep my notes organized and grouped together. So having things in the right place is important to me. But it's really easy to create a note in the wrong place or decide later that a file should really be somewhere else. So instead of dragging that note from one folder to another in the file explorer, I use this command and the keyboard shortcut to select the folder via the command palette. Again, I use the mech key for this, so the actual shortcut is shift control option M, but when I trigger it, the shortcut is actually right shift M. The next command that I use occasionally is the toggle stacked tabs command. This basically applies a visual style like the old Andy's notes plugin, where the note title bars got stacked on the side and you can scroll between your notes horizontally. I don't use this command all that often, but if you have a lot of reference notes open at once and you don't want them cluttering up your Obsidian interface, then this is kind of a different way to organize things on your screen and it can be helpful. So I have this command set to the keyboard shortcut, shift control option T or right shift T. The next couple of commands here I use when I want to clean up the Obsidian interface. I use these a lot when I'm taking screenshots to share in articles or newsletters. And again, there are three commands that you can use here to toggle the left sidebar, the right sidebar, and the ribbon on the far left. I have the left and right sidebar commands set to shift control option left arrow and shift control option right arrow respectively, which again uses the mech key, so it's really right shift left arrow and right shift right arrow. For the ribbon, I use shift control option down arrow or right shift down arrow. With all of these, you can use the command once to hide the UI element and then use it again to bring it back. The last two commands that I want to mention here are used for moving lines of text in your note using only your keyboard. These commands are move line up and move line down, which takes the current line, which is the one with the cursor, in your active note and it swaps it with the line immediately above or below. These are the only commands on this list that don't use the hyper key or the mech key for me, and I have these set to control option command up arrow or control option command down arrow respectively. These are three modifiers in the lower left of my keyboard, so it's still pretty easy to hit all of these modifier keys at once, though I do try to keep all my Obsidian shortcuts to either the hyper key or Mac key whenever possible. So there you have it, my list of essential built-in keyboard hotkeys and the top commands that I use keyboard shortcuts for. But as we wrap up here, a couple of quick tips. First, don't try to implement all of these keyboard shortcuts at once. Pick one or two keyboard shortcuts and get them under your fingers so you can do them automatically and then, add other keyboard shortcuts over time when you see them being useful. Second, take a look at the list of commands by going to settings hotkeys and looking for commands that don't currently have hotkeys that could make using Obsidian a little bit easier for you. And lastly, leverage the command palette to help you remember those hotkeys. Just open up the command palette and start typing the name of the command that you want to trigger and you'll see the hotkey appear in line for the command. So if you're brand new to keyboard shortcuts or hotkeys in Obsidian, then just remember this one keyboard shortcut, Command P. That will open the command palette and it will help you remember any other hotkey in Obsidian. That's by far the most important one in my opinion. Now, if you like this video and you want more Obsidian tips, templates, and resources, then you should download my free Obsidian Starter Vault at obsidianuniversity.com vault. My Starter Vault includes a bunch of additional templates, tips, and resources, like a markdown reference guide, a callout reference guide, links to my daily questions journaling shortcut, and a whole lot more to help you make more of your notes and ideas in Obsidian. Once again, you can download the Starter Vault for free by going to obsidianuniversity.com vault. And if you want some help applying values-based PKM principles to be more productive and creative, then you should check out my newsletter. I send out the newsletter every Monday, and it always includes an original essay, 
a link to something cool that's usually Obsidian related, and my personal notes from a different self-help or productivity book that I've read recently. You can sign up for the newsletter for free or view a recent newsletter first by going to practicalpkm.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in another video.